Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, let's pull up the screen. Ah, Mighty Alice. They've announced the WSFT uh, spinoff and how that's going to work. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Also, the uh, share structure update. We finally got that from Alice. And George is uh, trying to take Alice's name of all things. So let's, uh, let's talk about Alice and we'll talk about a lot of stuff. All right, first of all, in the market itself, I'm sure you noticed Jamie Dimon said there's a hurricane coming. We don't know if it's going to be a little hurricane or a big one. It's hard to say. Uh, gas prices are continuing to rise. I don't think there's much question we're going to end up seeing an average price of over $5 a gallon. Um, our president doesn't seem to be able to do anything about it. He probably really can't. The reality, and I don't mean he can't, as physically he can't. What I mean is he politically can't. Because if he did something to help with drilling or fracking or anything like that, he's going to get attacked by his left hard. And that's really tough for a president to do. And I just, I don't see it happening. So, you know, whether you like him or not, you know, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just telling you, I don't see anything getting done about gas prices. And also, the other thing that could help gas prices, if this Russia war would stop, that's obviously playing a role too. And right now, I thought it'd be over by the end of May, and it's not happening. Looks to me like it may go on and meander for a long time. And that's also hurting gas prices as well. So you've really got a lot of things working against it. And that leads to a lot of inflation. It's not the only thing causing inflation. We've had tremendous payroll inflation. We've had people that didn't, you know, a lot of people weren't working for two years and getting paid to do so. And it, people get used to that. I can't blame them. Who doesn't, who doesn't want free money and not have to work? I don't blame them for that. So, uh, you know, they're struggling with, God, I, I got to go back to work for less money than I'm making now doing nothing. And a lot of states, are, you know, were still paying. They were getting uh, child credit payments of $300 a month. That's gone. So there's a lot going on. And with the inflation and food inflation and all of that and cost of goods sold, it's really getting out of hand. So it, it's going to be a tough next three to six months. And I don't see anything turning around during that time. So I think the companies are going to have to cut back, save money where they can. They'll probably have to slow down the hiring and inflation will probably come down that way. I don't see it really happening any other way because I don't think they can continue to pass on the inflation from the cost of goods sold, shipping expenses, gas expense, everything that is pushing it up. They're not going to be able to pass that on to everybody. So I think the company's profits are going to go down and they're going to have to cut expenses. And that's going to lead to even a, probably a little bit longer recession. All right. So now let's get into ILUS since I've bored you with this other stuff. All right, now here's where ERT, Emergency Response Technology, which is currently owned 100% by ILUS, has created a public safety focused subdivision of ILUS. ER it says ERT has now acquired control of the fully reporting OTCQB company, Wikisoft Corp, which currently trades under the ticker WSFT. Nick Link has taken over as chairman of Wikisoft, which uh, with ILUS Managing Director JP Backwell, Chief Operating Officer, which I think he is with ILUS as well, I believe. No, he's managing director of ILUS, I think. Uh, basically the same thing. All right, and here you can see uh, Wikisoft, the way it's set up. It's already got a market cap of $33 million. It was much lower than that a couple of days ago when it first got announced when this stock uh, was down at like eight, between 8 and $0.12. Cents. It's uh, bumped up, and we'll show you that on the chart in a minute. But you can see there's outstanding shares of $100 million, but $79 million of those are restricted. And you've got 21 million that are unrestricted with a float of 21 million. So those restricted must be a bunch of insiders. And let's look at that. Okay, yeah, here's the number of restricted shares, the 79 million. And 77 million of them, um, let's see, are controlled by Illustrato Pictures International, ILUS. So the big chunk is owned by ILUS, which is pretty interesting. So those are restricted. So right now there's only 21 million that are on the float which is why that stock is, you know, bumped up quite a bit. And let's take a look at that. All right, here it is over the last five days. And it started out, you know, it was down in the uh, seven, eight cents, and then it ran all the way up to almost 50 cents. So it, would have, it basically five times. And then it pulled way back down to 32 cents. So now it's up about almost three to 400%, not as much as it was, but I mean, it's still way up. And I was on the dadgum golf course 
right in this area. I would have bought some at like 17 cents. But I, like I said, I was playing golf and I wasn't even watching my phone or anything. And so I missed out on this. And then I've said, well, crap, I missed this. And I would have jumped on it. I just would have, especially after I saw that float and it was a low number and the market cap was low. And I know they got a $100 million company they're getting ready to acquire. So like I said, I kind of missed it on that one. But uh, like I say, I'll just watch it. Uh, you know, I've got plenty of eyeless, so I'm not terribly concerned about it. Now, one good thing that has come out this week, besides the fact that we uh, found out about Brett Rosen and how he's involved with the company and how he's taken over some toxic debt from GPL and all of those things, like I said, a lot of information's come out this week. And uh, George Sharp has been really attacking all week. And I'm, you know, I'm wondering, like I said, I, he's kind of that double-edged sword. I told you he might end up be doing us a favor and we may end up getting a lot of information we wouldn't get. And sure enough, that's exactly what's been happening. Now, I hate to give him any credit, and I understand he's trying to take credit for it, but that was not his goal. His goal was not to help us. His goal was to try to mess up the company, obviously, and we'll talk more about him in a minute. But here's our new share structure, which we finally got. And as you can see, outstanding shares of $1.27 billion. We knew it was $1.2 and change, exactly what they said, and there it sits. And uh, Alice actually... I think we're going to find out some information about this number or something pertaining to it uh, this week because here's their Twitter. It says, a strong week ahead for Alice. We look forward to sharing some exciting news with you. So I'm wondering if there isn't something to do along with share structure involved with that. I could be wrong. It might be something even more exciting or something different. But anyway, I thought that's pretty interesting. So I'm not 100% sure how ERT is going to work with Wikisoft and how uh, they're going to figure out the financials on this. I've heard the term thrown around consolidated accounting because I'm trying to figure out how they're going to be able to show ERT's uh, financials as far as their revenues, et cetera. And it's being separate from ILIS, but ERT is sitting there on their balance sheet, how that all plays out. I'm not an accountant, so I'm not 100% sure how that works. I've owned a few companies, but never a mergers and acquisitions company. I never had like companies under an umbrella. So I'm not 100% sure how that, that's going to work out or how that's going to be uh, determined. I'm sure there's a plan for it. And I would think we'll be hearing about that fairly shortly. But anyway, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I do know. I've been on, I've been on the Discord and Igle's been talking about it, but it's still, I'm still a little bit not 100% sure how that all is going to work. Now, we do know George Sharp's been, you know, he hadn't said much in the last couple of days. So that's kind of interesting. But um, he's still on the attack, and he's, he's trying to take Alice's name. Now, you want to talk about somebody trolling a company that's just, you know, what is the purpose of that? I'm going to try to take your name from you. I mean, that's just give me a break. But right here, um, here's where it says, he, and he's had his attorney sent the cease and desist to Ilis International. It says, uh, Mr. Sharp has reserved the corporate name Ilis International from the Nevada Secretary of State, and he's trying to get him not to use it. So what is the point of that? Why would you do that? I mean, that is just a pure troll move. Cross the bridge of death must answer me these questions three. What is your favorite color? Blue. Right, off you go. Yep, definitely purely a troll move if there ever was one. <laughs> he's uh, the bridge keeper. But anyway, um, I'm a little bit confused as what he's trying to do other than, you know, other than just trying to trip up the company in some way. It's really kind of, kind of weird. I think he's either, he may be just trying to piss off Nick Link and JP to where they do something stupid. I can feel your anger. I am defenseless. Strike me down with all of your hatred. Yep, he may be trying, I don't know, maybe he's trying to get him to strike him down or something. Who knows? And like I said in the last video, don't let um, George Sharp get you upset. Because in reality, he might be doing us a favor. Look at all this good information that we've gotten all week. And I hate to give him any credit for it because, you know, and he tried to take some on Twitter as well. But like I said, don't let him upset you too much. He's just out there doing George Sharp stuff. It's what he does. He's kind of hit and miss. And I think on this one, I don't think he's on the right track. I just don't. But, you know, that's my opinion. Like I said, I'm going to keep watching this uh, stock. And Nick and JP seem to be – Continuing to do what they say they're going to do. And look, we did find out about Brett Rosen uh, buying out that bad debt from GPL. And he actually was on an interview with uh, Alpha Status Stocks. And they did a good interview. I mentioned that in my last video. And I've actually got a little clip here I'm going to show of it. Hi, it's Nick. Uh, make sure you comment CEO down of Illustrator oh, Pictures. 
I can confirm that RB Capital has financed in excess of $2 million in the last month into ILIS, um, in particular $2 million exactly in the last couple of weeks, which is financing our growth and acquisition spree. Um, RB Capital is an extremely supportive lender, actually one of the best lenders I've ever worked with in my 20-year business career. Um, if you look at the quality of the notes that he's giving us and the confidence that he's showing in our business, you know they have conversion prices of 50 cents on the current share price of 10 cents. So I think this shows the long-term view and long-term support that he has at the business. Um, and you know we're very supportive and thankful for you know working with RB Capital. And you know we're very excited about the business opportunities that we're working on and the deals that we're busy closing. Um, just disappointing to see some of the you know shenanigans that goes on in social media. Um, when we've got you know good businesses good lenders good people good shareholders out there getting affected by you know, ir irresponsible fake and unquantified nonsense claims um this is a clear short and distort campaign and you know i would like to confirm that rb capital is nothing but a good solid lender to us all right so yeah that was pretty interesting obviously that was nick link talking uh, about uh, brett rosen which is rb capital and uh, he seems to be pretty pleased with the loans they've gotten. And I think he was pleased to see that toxic debt taken from GPL and moved over to uh, RB Capital. And uh, if you'll remember in my last video, I showed that document that uh, Brett Rosen had put on Discord. So if you want any more information like that, you can always go on Discord. Occasionally, Igle will be on, uh, on stock twits as well if you, if you aren't a member of the Discord, but it's easy to be a member of it. And uh, so you can check that out if you want, or and it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and watch that full video of uh, Alpha Steta Stocks. And uh, they did a good job there interviewing Brett Rosen. So if you want to kind of get a better feel on this, uh, that was a pretty good interview to watch. All right, folks, and that's uh, Alice today. Just wanted to go over the WSFT announcement and talk about that a little bit and ERT and uh, the Alice uh, share structure update. And of course, George doing what he's doing. And if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know to continue to cover ILIS. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I'd certainly appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on Mr. Frugal Investor.